Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining me as we speak about mind renewal. Mind renewal. Again, the scripture exalts us to be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. The question today at hand is, we are approaching the closing, the ending of a decade. And we are entering a new decade, a new era. What will you gain having gone through what you went through in the last decade, in this decade that is coming to a close? What wealth will you utilize in ensuring the next decade of your life one is better two you achieve more three you don't make the same mistakes that you made in the previous decade many times you go on a job interview and one of the popular questions is where do you see yourself for five years ten years from today well as we reflect on the past decade what have we learned I learned several things and I want to share a few with you today one is the benefits of being rejected Yes, the benefits of being rejected. I want to exhort you today to this concept as we renew our minds. The one of the best thing that persons could do for you is to reject you. <laughs> is to reject you. And evil that is done unto us without we recognizing it is the acceptance of many. Had you been accepted at level one, then you might not have pursued level two and three. It was the rejection at level one that fueled you, that pushed you, that motivated you to pursue greater. If you were embraced at low level, if you were welcomed, hugged and kissed and caressed at low level, then the higher dimension that awaited you, that was already prepared for you, you would not have pursued. Can we go into 2020 with this policy? Reject me until I am my best me, until I have come into who God says I am. Recently, I had a conversation with a friend and she was saying to me, we were talking about another friend and we were saying, based on the, the present situation, we wish we were in a financial position to help. And the Lord allowed me to say these words. The worst thing could happen to our friend is us helping right now. That sounds strange, like madness. But think about it. The worst thing that we could do at that time was helping. Why? Because 
of the lessons that God was teaching that person. How do you function? How do you operate when things get tight? We know the good times. We love the good times. But I like what the songwriter says. He's the same God in the good and in the bad times. We run and we rush in. And it's because we love our friends and our families. But we rush in to their rescue before they have come to maturity. It's like, it's like saying to the mother, you need to give birth now when the pregnancy is only four months old. We're going to cause problems. And so we have to consider God and say, God, do you want me to intervene now? Do you want me to intervene now? The tight places, it's not designed to kill you. The tight places where everything seems to be shutting down, all doors, all possibilities are just closing. Promises made are no longer kept. And everyone seems to be saying, Ah, I'm just holding off on you right now. And you're making calls and you are getting frustrated. Why are all these doors close to me? I live on an island that has a volcano. And the volcano, though it is dormant, it has what is called veins. And this is where the volcano breathes through. The, the building code on the island dictates that no one can build in the veins. The veins must not be blocked, must not be, must, 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 must always remain clear. Why is that? Because the volcano needs breathing. It needs an outlet. And in where these outlets are, you find hot water springs. And these springs are known for medicinal, medicinal properties. Healing, testimonies of healing has been reported. And so though the volcano is dormant, it is not dead. Get that. Though you find yourself, you have so much aspirations, so much goals, so much ideas, but everything just seems to be closed on you, shut on you. It does not mean that you are dead. Dormancy does not mean dead. See, the dormant volcano is still being a blessing to others. So imagine if in your tight place, in your place where you are not able to, to give out what God has deposited in you and all doors seem to just be closing and things are tight on you, imagine you are still being effective. You are still helping persons. What will happen when you become active. When that which is within you begins to store again. The Lord wants me to share with you this morning. The reason, one of the reasons why things have gotten tight and doors are closed unto you. Is to prevent, to make breathing challenging. When that breathing, that outlet, when you have no longer no outlet and you begin to close in on God, there is a mighty eruption that is going to take place. And when that eruption takes place, the effect will be known nationwide. Families will be affected. In a positive way. Communities. Nations. International. Because.
because it's coming from a place that was tight and everything that was within you now erupts and the world benefits. The tight place. Don't despise the tight place. Dormancy does not equate to deadness. Don't accept that lie. You are not dead. You are not dead. A matter of fact, can I share this with you? I promise not to be long. The tight place also serves as a place of preserving you. <laughs> preserving you. Because that which is within you, you are anointed for difficult matters. You are being preserved for difficult matters. No, 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 no. The, the, the low level challenges. And that's a mistake that a lot of persons make. We get into every possible challenge that we, are, we encounter, we are made aware of. Wrong. Function where your anointing has prepared you for. Let me repeat that. Function where your anointing, your calling has prepared you for. You will never see the prime minister. Or let us say, you will never see the commissioner of police on the streets giving tickets. No. That's below his pay grade. That's below his calling, his anointing, his position. Not every fight, not every battle that presents itself needs your fighting. You see, we, we, we read the scriptures and we don't understand the scriptures in the fullness that it needs to be applied. Hear what the scripture says. The weapon of your warfare, they're not carnal. Carnal thinking tells you every fight that comes, you need to get involved in. No. The battle will get so intense against you. That all God is saying to you, okay, my daughter, my son, you have done your part. Give this to me now. Give this to me now. And so, when the Lord takes the battle from your hand, all is required of you is to give him worship, to give him praise. Will you worship God in your tight places? If you can only worship God when things are glorious and nice and dandy, you're not a true worshiper. You are what we call a situational worshiper, a circumstance worshiper, a good feeling worshiper. But when, and that's low level, but when you are able to worship God when your refrigerator is empty, when you are able to worship God, when your bank account is showing you a negative, when you can worship God when sickness is rocking your body, when you can worship God when lies are being told on you perpetually, then you have crossed over into high dimension of warfare, high dimension of praise, deeper depths, higher heights and deeper depths. God is saying to us today, as you go forward in 2020, how you fought your battles in 2019, will not work in 2020. Yes, it is the worship in spite of. It is the worship in spite of. I listened to Les Brown recently. Motivational speaker Les Brown. World renowned. And he shared something. He said, he started a business 
And when the business became successful, he gave the business to someone. Why? Because where his mind allowed him was not to embrace success at that level. It was too successful for him. My God. My God. The man built it. He worked and he built that business. And as soon as he began smelling success, he quit. Can I tell you something this morning? For From the beginning of this decade, the enemy has been warring us with the weapon of quitting. And he has been effectively using quitting against us. My God. Imagine he worked hard and just when he was now settling down to see his business grow from levels to level, he quit. Today, the Lord wants you to revisit all the ideas the businesses, ideas, the movies mm -hmm. that he gave to you. And because of your own fear, you quit. You quit. You quit. You aborted the mission. You aborted the purpose. Today, as we are going into preparing to go into 2020, we renew our minds in this wise. We are going back to those things that we gave up on. It is said that the graveyard is the most wealthy place on earth. It's not the gold mine, nor the diamond place. It's the graveyard. Because so many persons died with wealth here. They never released it. But every person watching this broadcast, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you will not go to the graveyard full. You will go to the grave empty, having deposited all that God had given to you. You will go to the graveyard empty. What the Lord has deposited in you is a legacy. It's an inheritance for the generation that will follow us. If we fail, if we fail in passing on the ideas, the business, the movies, the books, we have cheated, we would have cheated the next generation. On our grave tomb, they must write, cheater. No longer rest in peace, but cheater, because we would have cheated the future. By the power invested in me, I command you in the name of Jesus to no longer cheat the future. No longer cheat the future. The future is depending on you. Because as the Lord allowed me to write in this book, Mind Renewal, Biblical Secrets for Better You, what we live tomorrow, what we live tomorrow is what we secure today. Tomorrow is decided today. Tomorrow is decided today. Invest. Invest in tomorrow. Invest in tomorrow. What will you leave? For the generation to come. How will you be remembered? Let's think about this as we go into 2020. What is it that you are going to leave for the generation to come? It goes beyond saying declarations. And making New Year's resolution. And that's okay. But faith without works is dead. 
Faith is a verb. It's an action word. It requires you doing something. Rosa Parks did something. Marcus Garvey did something. Martin Luther King did something. What will you do? What will you do? We have a responsibility to the next generation. If we look in the scripture, the disciples, they did their part. They did their part. We are here today. What will we do? What will you do? We have to renew our minds. We have to renew our minds. What do you have in your hand? I'm closing with this. The widow woman, she cried out to Elijah and he said, my, 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 my husband is dead and the creditors are coming to take my children, my sons. And the man of God said, what do you have in your house? And she said, the only thing I have is a bottle of oil. And he said, borrow, go and borrow some vessels and pour. And pour. And she did. She went back and she told him, all the vessels are full. He said, now go and sell. Pay off your debts and live off the rest. Watch this. Watch this. She was in debt. Her husband died, leave her in debt. Left her in debt. The creditors were coming. And that which she needed to get out of debt, to secure her son's future, was in her house and she did not know. She had wealth in her house and did not know. My God. You, you, if persons around you knew that you were that which they have been praying for, get this, get this, <laughs> if they knew that that which they have been praying for the miracle that they have been praying for, the deliverance that they have been praying for, the blessing that they have been praying for, is you. They would have handled you differently. They would have treated you better. But like the oil, they saw it just like another bottle of oil. They saw it as simply a bottle of oil. They see you as just another person. Another girl, another boy. Another man, another woman. They underestimated the value. Your value. But we can't blame them. Why? Because they just didn't know. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Forgive them. They don't know. Nations are waiting on you. Families are waiting on you. You are what a family is waiting on. A community, a church, a nation. God has positioned you. Stop looking for someone else to come. God has equipped and positioned you to make that change. Make the change. Bring forth change in someone's life. Go forth in 2020. Go forth in 2020. Woman of God, go forth. Man of God, go forth. Go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being with me. The Lord has positioned purpose in my heart to come with you, meet with you every Friday. The time will be announced. The time will be we are working on organizing the time. And so we will be together every Friday. 
every Friday. Get a copy of my book, Mind Renewal, Biblical Secrets to a Better You. The devotion is on its way. 30-day devotion, volume 1. There are three volumes. Volume 1, volume 2, volume 3. And remember, in 2020, January 18, my daughter, Stacey Garvey, she is doing her conference, Prison Break. Prison Break. Check out, check it out, check it out. You will not regret it. Prison Break. Breaking, breaking, breaking of mental enslavements. God bless you. God bless you. Shalom.